see that we're trying to smooth everything out back to ground level. What I do now, I take this along here and I start moving it all around the area where there might could possibly be nails and screws. Look at here. This is what I'm talking about. Look, I've already picked up two. What is that? Semi buried under the stump. There it is. There it comes. Jamie! Look! Hold on a minute. Look! It's not a snake. Hey folks, Lester here. Uh, friends, today I am on a mission to do some cleanup around the uh, stump where we cremated uh, Dixie, Jamie's beloved horse. And uh, so the cremation process has been difficult. Everyone, we, we've talked a lot about it. And uh, now you know the why we decided to cremate. And then of course I showed you step-by-step step the how we go about cremating. Well, my final fires have all burnt out. And at this point, I'm gonna go out with the skid steer and kind of smooth everything down, spread some lime around, which can kind of help control just the smells and anything else. But I want you to be a part of this because um, we found out that, believe it or not, there's a lot of education that can be learned um, in processes like this. And I, I've, I've really been intrigued by the number of people who have written and ask questions about, about this process. So uh, you guys come and join me and let's go ahead and work on this together. Um, and uh, for anyone that is just finds this kind of stuff is just too morbid and just nothing that you wanna deal with is fine. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I had hot fires burning constant for three days, three days and three nights. And so I know I've already sifted through the uh, ashes enough to, to know that there's no body parts remaining. Everything from skull to teeth to bones are gone. So it's just, you know, it's just kind of sifting through ashes now um, and uh, just kind of cleaning up the area, cleaning up the area before we let any animals back onto that particular pasture. So you guys come with me and uh, let's do this together, all right? Things are always funner and gooder you already know how you know you already know this things are funner and gooder when you can do it with people you love and care about and that would be you so y'all join me all right so what i read on google was to press the green button wait 30 seconds get, uh, after you've waited your 30 seconds oh put down you have to have your safety belt on you can start it at this point and then you have to release your brake. And now we are good to go. Yeah, I love this thing. I'm just taking and dragging everything, smoothing everything out. Uh, and in this, I can start looking for any nails and screws and anything that may have broken off of the pallets while I was burning. I don't want to risk ever having any tire uh, issues out here. Now those right there are clumps of hay. Don't let that kind of stuff right... Let me turn this off for a minute. So when you run across things like that, don't let that kind of stuff spook you and think that that's part of a, you know, part of our, our beloved Dixie. Those are clumps of hay. You remember that I had to use hay to get that fire burning nice and hot. And what I chose to do was use old hay that was already molded, mildew had gotten wet, and was no good for horses and cows to eat on. So yes, you do come across clumps of hay, things that would not burn, and so we'll rake that kind of stuff out of here, and uh, over time, it'll just kind of decompose along with everything else. I'm trying to pull everything downhill so that when we get our rains, it'll continue to wash things off this direction. 
All we're seeing here, guys, are twigs, hay, things that did not burn, but we're, there are no remains of any of our animal here, all right? Now, I know that you're saying, Lester, I see flies. Why do I see flies? Yes, I see flies also. And so I am a little bit concerned about that. But we're going to find the source of those flies in all of this. And that's why this is such an important process. You see, we're trying to smooth everything out back to ground level. Do it, do it again. You can see from here how clean the area is. Now, the reason I'm using the rented skid steer is because it doesn't have tires that can get punch, punctured by nails and screws. Uh, I did use my tractor to move around the materials and to sift through everything. But uh, as far as cleaning everything up, I wanted to use the skid steer, um, you know, because with the tracks, you can't puncture anything. It has been rented. It's bought and paid for or rented and paid for. So what I do now, I take this along here and I start moving it all around the area where there might could possibly be nails and screws look at here this is what i'm talking about look i've already picked up two and so i'm going to put these in my pocket for now but i want to show you guys how this thing works and look look how far away i am from where the fire was burning so in some of that you know sifting around things do get pushed and pulled and so these are for sure things that could flatten the tire uh on my lawnmower or my tractor. So, what is that? It's a stick of some sort. Y'all, y'all hear this? Look, I'm picking up nails like crazy. They are so. Look, I heard another one. I am picking up nails and metal. Can y'all see what I'm seeing? We're gonna go all down through here. Man, you can hear the clinks. What is that? What the heck? Ah! Hold on. My plan was not to be digging in the dirt today. <laughs> There's something down in here. It's semi buried under the stump. There it, there it comes. What in the world? Guys, I think that this is something, I think that this might be more of an artifact. Let me go clean this up. Hold on. I'm gonna leave this sitting right where I found it. An old bayonet. They call them a bayonet. Bayonet, Bay bayonet, bayonet, a bayonet. I believe they call them a bayonet. The reason I say that is look at the end over here. Now, that was clogged with dirt. I got that all cleaned out. I'm afraid. Look at this. Jamie! Look! I 
Hold on a minute. Look! It's not a snake. Here, spray, and, or video, and I'll spray. Look at here. Where did you find that? By your, by our Dixie stuff. Gosh, that's scary. No, 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 no. Listen, this is a, this is an artifact. This I understand old. that, but that was in the pasture. Yeah. Y'all are. But look. Oh. I don't understand what it is. Okay. This is in really good condition. A little bit dirty. Rusty. You can feel it's pitted. It means it's like rust. But believe it or not, this thing could be a couple hundred years old. Maybe not that What? Old. Okay, let me tell you how it works. This is your rifle. And there was this part on a Civil War rifle, maybe even World War II rifles, when they were, before they were automatic fire, when they were musket loaded. Okay. And so you would shoot your gun once, but it took time to reload. But if you had a charging enemy who were coming at you, you didn't have time to a reload. So you'd have a weapon at the ready. This would be, this would be attached somehow to the top or the bottom of your gun. That's crazy. So in case you were being charged, you had your one shot, musket loaded shot. And then if you had time to reload, great. But if not, you would use your weapon to, to fight off the charge. And this is a bayonet. This here goes on the end. And I don't know, I have to figure out how it all works together. I got it to unfreeze. Look at this. That's crazy. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, but I'm so baffled right now. My dad's going to be baffled. And I found it using our little push uh, <laughs> nail picker upper. No way. All right. Oh, hold fire. We're going to volley us. Company present arms. Everybody, once you're reloaded, hold fire, back along the fence, and we're pushing down. Hold fire. Hold, hold fire. it, hold it, hold it. Hold fire. Hold fire, we're pushing up. All right, turn the line along the fence, go forward. Let's move, let's move. Get out there. Charge. Move forward. Get going. Charge! 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 So, I have a theory, and suddenly, my entire focus is no longer on, I'm sorry to say, it's kind of mean to say, but I, now I just want to come out here and metal detect. Now I want to come out here and just metal detect. How bizarre. Let me show y'all the location where I found that. Because I do have a theory, and we're going to try to piece some things together here. Okay. Look at this small indentation of earth. Uh, it's hard to see. I know it's hard for you to see. But let me explain to you what happens here. This over here, at some point, it is. It's a small indentation of earth. Right here alongside this stump. Goes down along over here it also goes down over here and friends i'm gonna tell you something i'm trying to walk you with i'm gonna try to walk it with you look so you can see the indentation here where the grass does not grow it goes right on back and it goes right down to the river i'm pointing at the river i'm pointing at the river right over there i know you can't see it because it's off a of bluff bank but the river and how much you want to bet me how much you want to bet me that at some point when those soldiers were coming over here, the Confederate soldiers, there's a staging point. There's a staging point no more than a quarter of a mile from here where they had a staging point for the Battle of Galveston. So ferry boats, oh my God. I gotta get my breath and and 
and think of my words because right now my <sighs> how much you want to bet ferry boats that we, this is this is historical fact ferry boats dropped off hundreds of confederate soldiers along the river here and they marched over to their staging point which is a historical marker right the right over there right over there and how much you want to bet that this over here where i'm walking right now where there's a natural indentation in the ground how much you want to bet this was not an old road and this was the exact same road that hundreds of soldiers walked from their disembarkment off that river ferry over to their staging point where they made all their final preparations before they marched back to their ferry boats and loaded them and headed down to Galveston for the, well, for the Battle of Galveston Bay. You can look it up. And along that way, one of them dropped a piece of his weapon, his bayonet, come off right here. And that's where it was at right there. Now, I'll show you where I'm at in uh, relation to everything around the pastures. So, obviously, that's the shop, the RV right over there. All this over here is natural terrain. It flows downhill. There's the big pasture with the ostriches and the longhorns, the horses and donkeys. Uh, this is actually one of our goat pastures that I'm in. We've kept the goats off until I could get all this cleaned up. And all of a sudden, I don't even care about this job today. I've got to I gotta get this done, but I don't want to do this right now. I want to go call my dad. Let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.